My brother once told me that responsibility breeds maturity. Often the moments where we feel like we grew up the most have less to do with a milestone, a birthday, and more to do with overcoming incredible adversity. The Last of Us is an exploration of the human condition, specifically when put in extreme circumstance. And the lens we look at this story through is Ellie and Joel's relationship. We watch as Ellie is forced to overcome challenges, to mature and take on new responsibility, to handle the hardship of the world Joel has already adjusted to. And in juxtaposition, we watch as Joel's rough exterior, these walls and barriers he's created to cope with the hardship of the world he lives in and the actions he's taken, come down. Because the first eight episodes of The Last of Us are about the development of Joel and Ellie's relationship and the ways that they both impact one another. And it all comes together in a single moment. But we'll get to that later. First, let's look at the foundation this episode was built off of. In one of my previous videos, I stated that for a roller coaster to come down, first it must start with a climb. I believe a lot of the episodes that were slower, that people were highly critical of because of their pacing, will be better received in retrospect when you place it into the full context of the story. I believe all seven episodes before the eighth were instrumental in creating an environment for the eighth to flourish. Because the way we experience anything is all built with context. A sudden blaring noise in a quiet room feels louder, and it's easy to celebrate the big moments, the things that worked, when everything comes together, but without proper setup, those moments will feel hollow. And episode eight was anything but hollow. Scott Shepard and the writers created a terrifying villain, one rooted in ego, masochism, and violence, all of which is hiding behind a facade of empathetic leadership. And I could probably make an entire video about how they slowly and masterfully revealed the inner machinations of David's mind. But while Scott Shepard's performance was remarkable, and having a disgusting monster of a villain was an incredibly important part of this episode, I want to focus instead on Ellie and Joel. It may seem obvious why I want to focus on the main characters, but there's something special about episode 8. Because this week they took all of Ellie's growth, every small moment, every problem, every trauma that she had to overcome, it all accumulates to the way she responds to the environment she's forced into in episode 8. First, she decided to stay and fight, risking her life to try and take care of Joel. You can clearly see how hungry she is when she's eating the remaining meat they have, but she saves some for Joel before going out and hunting. And you can see her fronting, trying to be intimidating in her conflict with James and David. James, by the way, being Troy Baker, Joel's original actor. And there's this cool little moment where if you compare her trying to be tough at the beginning of the scene Drop your rifles! Now! versus how she actually responds after James shows back up with the medicine, back away. there's a clear difference in composure and authority in her voice that's different than when she was fronting. Because this is that moment I was talking about, a high stress situation that requires responsibility. When shit hits the fan and you have no one to lean on, so you have to figure it out yourself. That's what this episode is ultimately about, Ellie defending herself because Joel is no longer able to. And you know what I see when I look at you? David tries to convince Ellie that they're the same. Me. And he highlights some of her traits. The fact that she's capable of leading, smart, loyal, and more than anything, violent. And while he's right about those things, he doesn't understand a very crucial part of who Ellie is, something that makes her much more similar to Joel than him. While Ellie isn't ignorant to the violent world she exists in, her violence comes from not one, but two places. The first is self-preservation. The second, and much more important to her character, is protection. Because in reality, Ellie is not similar to David. David exists in a place of ego, a God complex where he believes he can take what he wants, when he wants, that it's his duty to lead others, a shepherd with sheep. But Ellie and Joel, in this weird way, have a very selfish selflessness, where for someone in their life that they care about, they would do anything. Which is where Joel comes into the equation. He fights through his diminishing health and enacts extreme violence to find Ellie. This is juxtaposed to Ellie having to fend off this monster of a man through her own violence. There's a huge amount of action, things are chaotic, and Ellie goes through a deeply traumatic experience, fighting for her life in an incredibly powerful scene. Everything about Bella Ramsey's performance here was remarkable. They did an incredible job. Because Ellie has fought alone this entire time, and with blood covering her face, she stumbles into the snow, still completely in a place of self-preservation. 
And then Joel finds her. He holds her and tells her it's going to be okay. And we have this shot where his broken watch, the symbol of his failure as a parent, is framed against his face. As their relationship becomes clear, this is the moment the entire series has led up to so far. Two deeply lonely characters who finally have each other. <laughs>